Hey everyone, I'm Matthew. I'm one of the co-creators of Beekeeper Studio. We just launched version 2.0 of Beekeeper Studio. So I wanted to jump in and take you through the whole app. Beekeeper Studio is a database manager and SQL editor for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. I'm using Linux here. It works great on all three platforms. So let me jump in. This is a connection screen to connect to your database. It's a little dry, so I'll go over it pretty quick. Um, you just add your database connection info here. We support a range of different database types. You can use SSL to connect to your database. Uh, you can use an SSH tunnel to connect to your database, whatever you need. In this case, I don't need to. This is my developer Postgres database. I'm just going to connect. And then the core interface of Beekeeper Studio is right here. So on the left, we have all the tables in this database. And on the right, we have the main window with our query tabs, and as you'll see in a second, some other different kinds of tabs. And we have this pin section. So I think this AXA table is super important. I'm going to be using it a lot in this demo, spoiler alert. Um, but if you want, you can pin whatever tables you want, and they'll stay here at the top. So if I disconnect from this database and reconnect, here we go, they're still at the top. So let's look at the AXA table. All right, so um, I have a database here of actors and films. I, in this demo, I work for the movie industry because that sounds pretty glamorous. All right, let's look at their top 100 actors. Okay, here's a bunch of actors, very nice. This is a useful query. I've spent a long time writing it. I don't want to lose it. So I'm going to save it as top 100 actors for a demo. Great. Uh, if I want to open a query I've previously saved, I can click on the Saved Queries tab. And you can see I've fluffed up this demo a few times before. So here are my other saved queries. Um, but you click a save query and it opens it in a tab. I can also see my query history. So I can see all the queries that I've ran previously. If I want to pop something open, I can do it. Just click it, pop, and it'll pop it open in a new tab. Great. So, you know, I think one problem I have is I'm looking at this data, you know, and I think I've made a mistake. I think I've made a mistake. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open the actor table and I'm going to look for people called Nick. I don't remember exactly how to spell his name, so let's just do first name is like N-I. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, here we go, look. Nicholas Stallone. So he, he's not related to the Stallones. Like, that's clearly a mistake. And he does not own Rambo.com, so let's null that out. Um, when I make a change to a table in Beekeeper Studio, you can see at the bottom I gain two new buttons, reset and apply. And this is common across our whole interface. If you're making a change, we'll give you these two buttons. Reset does what it sounds like. It will just kind of reset the state of the view to how it was. Um, obviously, I want to make these changes because it's a terrible information there right there. So I'm going to click apply. It'll save that data, notify you that it's saved right, and it's good to go. Um, I notice when I save Nick's info that this last updated column changed. I wonder why that is. So I'm going to click on the structure button here, or right click view structure, and have a look at the table structure view. So this is our third kind of tab. So we have query tabs, table tabs, table structure tabs. This tells me all the columns in the table, the indexes on the table, any foreign keys or relations, and any triggers. So in this case, um, this trigger here is what fired when I saved the record. It updated the last updated column with a new timestamp. Great. I'm also thinking, you know, maybe I don't want to collect email addresses. It's just going to be a pain to manage. So I'm going to delete that column. I'm going to add a new one. So a lot of actors have been telling me they have a favorite film. So I'm going to add a favorite film column. And this is nullable because not everybody has one. Um, and the default value, I'm just going to leave that blank. If I click apply, it'll make those changes, remove that previous column and add my new one. Um, my view will be updated, uh, and the sidebar is updated automatically. That's great. Now, if I want to look people up by their favorite film, I'm going to want an index. So let's not have a unique index, because people can have, uh, the f multiple people can have the same favorite film. I'm just going to add an index here, apply that. Great, I have a new index on my table. And I don't have any foreign keys for this table, but let's jump to a table that does. So the film table, which lists all the films in my database. I have a lot of data. Whoa, a thousand records. Crushing it. 
Um, you can see this relates to a language, so each film has a language, and I have another table to manage languages, and this is marked by a little foreign key icon here and tells me that oh, it goes to the language table, language ID. If I click this link, it'll pop me to the language table and navigate to that, that record that's referenced in the foreign key, and you can see that's even indicated in the tab header. So if I find, I don't even know if I have any other languages in this database, probably not. No, everything's in English. But if I had a different uh, language ID here, and I click this button, it would take me to the different different record in here, and you get a new tab for it too. And if I clear this out, you can see the tab header updates to indicate this is no longer filtered. So if we want to look or modify these foreign keys, we can jump to the structure view for the film. Um, and here you can see the language ID foreign key. That's the one we used. But I could add another one, right? So maybe maybe the description field is actually a foreign key to the city table. And it's not, right? I'm not actually going to create this foreign key. But um, just for demonstration purposes, we could do that. So on delete cascade, fantastic. And again, reset or apply. Do I want to apply this relation change? In this case, no. But I could. Or I could just click the arrow and click copy to SQL if I wanted to modify this myself. So just to make sure it's doing what I want it to, this looks pretty good. I can make manual modifications to this then before running it. Great. One other thing we can do is create a table. So click new table. Uh, we can call it, let's call it Matthew Rocks, because, you know, why not? Um, we're just going to create a super empty table like this. Uh, but you can add fields here. So we can we can add a name, name field. This can be what we have some kind of autocomplete types. So this is probably just going to be a varchar 255. Uh, there's no default, no comment, it's not going to be a primary key, but we can create that. Um, and then we have a new table in the sidebar. This table now exists in the database. Um, and we can modify this just like we did previously. And we already have an index because we had a primary key. We have no relations and we have no triggers. And this table is, as you might imagine, it's totally empty. So a lot of flexibility here to create tables, modify the data, run queries, modify the structure, add indexes, add relations. Uh, one final thing I'll talk through on this view is the export. So if I'm on this view, these are my NI actors. I think this would be pretty useful. I'm going to move it into a spreadsheet or something like that. I can export the filtered view. So I want this all in JSON. I'm going to upload it to my Elasticsearch cluster. Make a JSON file, click Run. Voila, here's my export. Great. And if I'm on the query view, I can download this result table as well. Same kind of thing, download JSON. And that's kind of it. So Beekeeper is great for looking at, modifying uh, your tables, modifying the structure of those tables, adding indexes, adding relations, or even just navigating around to try and debug what's going on. Um, we have some other nice UI things that are kind of unrelated to SQL, let's be honest. We have a light theme, so I can switch this at will to the light theme. Whoa, look at that. If you like that kind of thing, because it's useful, I like the dark theme. I live in a cave. Um, we also have two different menu styles. So this is our menu style, which works well on Windows and Linux. So it's kind of got custom buttons up here. But I know a lot of people like to have their native buttons. So we also have the native um, native menu style. You have to restart to show that, but trust me, it works. Um, and on Mac, it just has a native Mac menu buttons at the top left. Everything looks really nice. If you are back on the connection screen, I'll show you kind of one more thing. You can import from a URL. So if you have Heroku, you can just paste the Heroku database URL here and it'll just work. Uh, you can also drag and drop SQLite files. And here's a little kind of tip bit. These are a couple of little extras I'll just point out at the end. If you go to help add beekeepers database, it will add beekeeper itself uses a SQLite database to store its configuration. It'll add it to the sidebar here. And you can go in and just poke around. So like here are pin tables. These are all the pin tables in my beekeeper. And everything just works exactly the same, right? You have foreign keys. You can see these are the tables that I've pinned. Right, so actor, here it is. Um, you can look at saved connections, saved queries. So you can look at the favorite queries. Here are my actor queries right here. Um, and just poke around in this just like it's any other kind of database.
which is pretty neat. And for those who are interested, you know, if, if you just want to write some SQL, like you can turn out right now, but for those that are interested, this is all a JavaScript and HTML app. So you can go in here and just poke around and and have a look around, see how we make Beekeeper Studio. Um, it uses Vue.js. It's pretty fast. It works great. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. I look forward to seeing you on GitHub. We're at beekeeperstudio.io and you can email me, matthew at beekeeperstudio.io if you have any questions or comments. Love to see you contribute. Um, and until next time, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.